Could winning a raffle prize really change your life? Now, this does seem like a bold claim, but we're not talking about a box of chocolates or the bottle of wine that's been lurking in the back of someone's cupboard since 1995. We've all donated those uh, to raffles, I'm sure. Maybe just me. Uh, But to explain more about this, we are joined by Audrey Humphreys, who won a raffle. And Audrey, just tell us first of all about the prize you won. The prize was a really amazing prize. It was a portrait photography session. So to go along to a professional studio run by Sean Fisher and have a photo done and then a huge framed portrait for my wall at home. Now, I mean, by anyone's standards, that is an incredible prize to win. But really, it just meant so much to you, not only winning it, the sort of thinking about it and actually the process of going through it. Just explain why to us. Okay, well... I'm of a certain age, do I say this on the radio, I'm 56, Um, and often, yes, well gosh, well when do you have your photo taken by a professional person? The last time I had that done was 37 years ago on my wedding day, it's never happened since. Um, I've thought about it, I saw on the night that Sean had a display and she had some lovely photos and I thought about it, but when I won that raffle prize, I went into shock. It was like, oh my goodness, I've won. And I'm very lucky at raffles, but never this lucky. And um, I was, I was definitely in shock. In fact, the friend who was with me said that to me. She said, I think, you know, I didn't come down for days. And then over the coming weeks while it was getting planned and things, because I won the prize back in November and I actually had the photo session in March, um, I started to tell people about it. And it had a really strange effect on me that I felt, I felt guilty. I thought, gosh, am I really going to do this? Am I going to go along and have my photo taken for three, four hours and be centre stage? And it seems vain. It seems something you don't do for yourself. You know, you might have your photo taken with the grandchildren or you might have your photo taken at a friend's birthday party. But I would have been in the background. I wouldn't have wanted to be in the foreground. And here I was going to be centre stage. It was going to be all about me. And I found myself almost making excuses because it sounded wrong to spend all that attention on me. But the raffle prize gave me permission. The raffle prize said, no, you can do this. And deep down, I thought, I want to do this. I want to do something for me for a change, which does seem wrong. As a woman, you often don't do things for you. You do them for the family. You do them for someone else, but you don't do them for you. So, you know, as it was getting planned, it was such a strange experience. But wow, it was amazing. You mentioned that the last time you'd had a professional photo taken was on your wedding day. What did your husband think about it when you told him that you'd won this prize and this was going to be happening? Oh, well, that was quite funny, really. Um, Well, I got home and I was just ecstatic. I ran in the house and I went, you wouldn't believe what I've won. I've won the raffle. And he's used to me winning raffles. So he was like, yeah, yeah, he'd be watching TV all night. And I, I won this most amazing prize. I'm going to have my photo taken. It's going to be a makeup hair job. I'm going to get this huge portrait. And I mean huge, you know, it's like oh, a couple of feet across and three feet deep, you know, all framed picture of myself. Um, and Noel was sitting on the settee and he looked up at me and he went, oh, I don't like those. I'd rather just take a photo of you myself. It won't look like you. And he really burst the bubble. And I was like, no, no, I I want to have this done. And Sean's photos are lovely and I've seen them and they're really natural. And he went, hmm, okay, if you want to have it done. And he he, he really, oh, he knocked knocked me over sort of in his response. I was quite sort of, oh, oh, okay. It's a really interesting thing that he said though, isn't it? It won't be you. Because I think particularly as women, you do wear many different hats you know you are a mother you've had I mean we'll come to some of the work you've done uh, previously but you've had a really interesting career you're now a grandmother who is the real you? I've got lots of different me's people who know me in different parts of my life see me very differently I run an accountancy business so some of my clients well no that's probably not true they all know I'm a bit crazy but um, they see me as the person who's good with numbers which sounds very boring but I also dance Argentine tango. I've got an allotment and I get muddy and dirty. And, you know, I've run a paragliding school. So I've also run a children's day nursery. I've done lots of different things. You don't get to my age without having a story to tell. But yeah, who is the real me? Well, yep, that's a difficult question. <laughs> and I guess as well, the, the idea of sort of having a photo shoot like this done, the immediate um, sort of image that comes to mind is quite glamorous and glitzy and I mean you mentioned you do tango but would you have described yourself previously as someone that was quite glamorous and if not how on earth do you sort of approach something like this? Yes that was a hard bit because almost 
after the excitement sort of wore off, well, not totally wore off, then you think, how am I going to do this? Because Sean got in touch and she said, oh, so you can choose a few outfits, you can bring different things along. And I was like, oh, what do I wear for this? What do I wear for this? And at the back of my mind was what Noel, my husband, had said of, I wanted to be natural. And I wanted it to be natural too. I wanted to know it was me. So it was thinking about what I was going to wear and all of that, all the excitement building up to it. Well, I'm delighted to say we are also joined by Sham Fisher, photographer, uh, who took these amazing photographs. And we, we've had a, a chance to look at them and we'll, we'll post some pictures later. But Shan, how typical is Audrey's response to having her photograph taken? Um, hello, everyone. And I think Audrey, she was quite excited. I never met her before. At that evening, when I knew that she won the, the raffle um, to have uh, my brand new portrait service, and I was over the moon, and I knew that she had a great personality and story to tell and inspirational, and she's beautiful. And for me, last year, it marks my 10 years um, career. So I decided to launch this brand new um, portrait service that aiming to create beautiful photo, catch beauty of uh, everyday women. And it's about more about just empowering women through all the stage of their life. You know, celebrate their, you know, their un- uniqueness and their beauty and tell the story to inspire other women. And that's incredible, isn't it? Because I think... Um Audrey, I don't know what you were like having your photograph taken before. Have you a fan of having your photo taken? Um, Certainly not with my glasses on. And um, (laughs) always breathe in and try and hide the tummy behind other people and be in the background more than in the forefront. Um, It's difficult. You only take photos when you have an excuse, don't you? You have the grandchildren round or it's somebody's birthday and things like that. I'm not a great fan of having my photo taken. And certainly the thought of somebody making me the centre of attention while they take my photo... Oh, as it got closer on the morning, I was I was excited, but oh, it was with some trepidation that I knocked on Sean's door. <laughs> <laughs> but that that in itself sort of sums up, I think, probably the way most of us would feel. So, Sean, in that instant, then how where how does your process begin, and how do you make someone feel comfortable in that instance in order to be able to get the real them in a photograph? Ah, oh, I want to catch you know the real her and. Um, I just asked her, you know, just um, be yourself, and and I, if I see something beautiful about her, I tell her, I tell her that she got a beautiful eyes, she had beautiful blue eyes, and her smiling is so friendly, and she's so warm, and I just tell her, I I I feel that for so many years I've been taking photo of people, I can see everyone's beauty. And I love to catch that and I want to show them that that's you and how beautiful you are and how amazing and talented. I know um, special for women, once become a mother, we are, you know, we don't feel our beautiful anymore. We probably get older, we struggle with the housework and we put weights on and we just have no time for ourselves. And so many women just forget themselves, they just feel that, oh, don't take photo of me, just my kids. And But one day, when your kids grow up, they look for the photo of you. In their eyes, the mother is the most beautiful woman in the world. And what can they find? They find nothing. Not the, not the selfie that on your iPhone. They want something beautiful that about the mother. You know, one day we are, lo- we are all will, you know, not in this world anymore. And what we left over for the children to remember us is a beautiful photo of us and something, te- something tangible, something legacy that we could pass on generation and generation. And that's what I wanted to catch the bow woman. Want them to remember themselves. They are beautiful always and they are wonderful. My word, that is so lovely. That is such a beautiful thing to say. And, you know, I knew this was going to be something of a sort of emotional and, and moving experience chatting to the ladies because I have to tell you, it was, it was a few weeks ago, Audrey actually called us about this. And the reason she wanted, she called us was because she really wanted to share this experience and let other women know that they are allowed to do this. And I think there's something so powerful about trying to get that message across because... 
as you say, we do have beauty in us, but we're not very good at admitting that. And we're not very good at actually accepting that, are we? That's the thing. And so it, has it helped you in that respect, Audrey? Do you feel better about yourself now? Oh, honestly, from when I entered into that photography studio, which is in Sean's home, it was just, it was amazing because they, um, the team there, Sean's team did my hair, my makeup, um, and from the outset, they were saying such lovely things to me. And at first I was like, oh, you know, <laughs> you're you not used to taking compliments, are you? Um, but I was there all day. I didn't leave until four in the afternoon. And just to have somebody saying to you, oh, you have a beautiful smile. The photos are amazing. You look gorgeous. Um, you look like Nicole Kidman. Was that the one? <laughs> yes, <laughs> you look like does. Audrey Hepburn. I was like, oh, I feel good. And by the end, honestly, I was driving home. And I was on cloud nine. I was buzzing. I felt my confidence level was so high. Um, I couldn't stop grinning. I think I was smiling so much, even by myself in the car. I was just so emotional. It had just such a profound effect on me. And telling people about it afterwards, I was saying, you know, it sounds such a simple thing. It does sound simple, but it wasn't. It was quite profound. It was amazing. And that's really even before you saw the finished product. Um, yes. Describe what it was like to us um, when you actually saw the photographs that Shan had taken. Oh, oh, she's lovely. I arrived at her home and she said, oh, I'm so excited. And Shan is so warm hearted and so excited and buzzing with you. You know, she she loves it. She was like, oh, I can't wait to show you these. And she made me shut my eyes and she led me with my eyes shut and stood me in front of a wall where there must have been, I don't know, 20 something photos of me all looking down at me. And I was like, oh, my goodness, that is me. You know, oh, I'm going to get all emotional now. <laughs> but, you know, looking at yourself, looking, it was me, but it was me on a good day. <laughs> it was Audrey, the tango dancer. It was Audrey, um, the glamorous person. It was Audrey, the more sort of casual person in jeans and a shirt. You know, it was the everyday Audrey, too. It was... It was all the aspects of me. It was quite something. And then I suppose we have to ask as well, uh, what did your husband think when he oh. showed him the photos? <laughs> well, I kept them secret and Sean was great because she got a few of them ready for me. And a few days later, it was our 37th wedding anniversary. I'm going to have to try not to cry now. <laughs> <laughs> we all cry together. But, uh, <laughs> I gave Noel the photos in the morning and I said, this is a picture of me. These are the pictures of me. So this is my present to you. Oh, I'm going to get so emotional. This is silly. And he opened them and I said, so is it me? And he said, it is you. They're beautiful. Oh, me, <laughs> gosh, nice. I know. <laughs> Do, do you know what? That does raise an interesting question, though, as we're all trying to fight back the tears here. And this is, let's not share this bit of video maybe online <laughs> later. Um, would you ever do this service for men, do you think? And, and if so, how do you think they would approach this? Yes, I love to do this for everybody, not only women, but because I'm a woman and I'm now a mother of two boys and I totally understand. I'm not like 20s anymore and I do sometimes feel myself like uh, I'm not young anymore and I'm not, not as beautiful as I used to be. But, you know, I always remember myself, you know, the, the real me and, and I love to do this for everybody, not only just women, like men, more about uh, everyone's story. I love to ca not only to capture, you know, just create a beautiful photo, but also tell the story. And everyone's story is so inspirational. I just so privileged. I met so many amazing people through my career. And since I launched like um, this portrait service, I have photographed so many women. I truly been inspired by, you know, the love and their personality and their story. And I'm going to create a video that I'm going to like show everyone and and I can't wait, you know, we're going to finish the video and about Audrey and her interview and tell us about her amazing story, her beauty and that going to inspire all the other women as well. And Audrey, I said in the introduction that this prize had changed your life and, and some people might wonder where I'd gone too far with that. What would you say? It's... Um it has had a real effect on me. Um, it's made, I am reasonably confident, you know, but it's made me feel really confident. And now I've got this beautiful portrait that is a large portrait. And as you walk into my lounge, 
she looks at you. She looks at you. Um, it's the one that looks like Audrey Hepburn. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's me. And I'm just smiling. And I can't walk in that lounge now without smiling. It's lovely. And Noel um, goes in and he said, she's always looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> always watching. <laughs> I think the eyes will follow you around the room. But just like Sean said, I, I feel she did capture my story. Um, I've got my laughter lines and I've got my wrinkles. And although I look amazing on these photos, she's she's left those in. They haven't tried to hide that I've had a life. Um, but she has captured me. And I love the thought that just like those ladies in the art gallery, I've got my picture on the wall and something to hand down. Hopefully they'll think, wow, she looked good. <laughs> that was my great, 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 great grandma or something. You know? Well, Audrey, mm -hmm. it's so lovely to have you with us this afternoon. Audrey, thank you so much for getting in touch with us to, to share that story. Um, what do you reckon? A bit well, like our photographs after the uh, after the show. Maybe. Well, I think we need to take better selfies. Yes, yeah, I think we really do. <laughs> uh, it is 24 Ma, minutes um, past two. Chat now. with Audrey and Shan about um, the portrait. Um, that Audrey had done after winning that raffle prize and the way Audrey that you um, reflected on portraits in art galleries and you see those pictures which often capture the essence of the woman in in the picture you know I, I love the National Portrait Gallery have you yeah, been it's wonderful mm, it yeah. is it's just amazing. it's not just women obviously it's you know all those historical figures and just thinking wow that's captured something of them and I love the fact that actually photography does that nowadays just in a slightly different way and I never really thought about that before Shan until you were talking about you know just capturing the real person yes I think it's uh, a photograph is for me is uh, forever you meet the history once you capture that moment and for me I'm not just aim to create beautiful photo but also capture the soul of individual and that you know empowering people that through all stage of their life and they look back and they see the real of themselves and also bring out the best value about about themselves in the photograph I capture. You know, we have so many people on, on the show and we always take a photograph for our um, blog, which is on maxradio.com and on Facebook as well, uh, for after the programme. And honestly, I'm, I'd say 90% of the time, people's first reaction is, oh, I'm not photogenic. Oh, I hate having my photograph taken. What is it that we find so difficult about it? Um, yes, we all very criticize that to ourselves, do we? Because just a woman, oh, I'm tired today and I'm so busy and I put weights on and, but I, I, I just tell them, you know, I can see you're beautiful and you just need to, you know, trust yourself and value yourself and you need a good photographer. <laughs> <laughs> and then also part of it as well that we were just saying is that it's also about you talked about blogs and, and Facebook and everything and but there's something about having an actual photograph you know instead of having that tangible thing to hold and to look at and to, as Audrey has done put on the wall and be able to see it every day that's important as well isn't it yes I I think now we are in this digital generation Anybody just say, oh, I just want uh, all the photo in the USB and on the disc. And I know what they're going to do. All the beautiful memory, just keep it in the USB. They're so busy. Nobody have time to print it out and look back again. And um, I don't want people's precious moment just live in the drawer or live in the USB. I want something tangible that you can look at it every single day. It truly brings a lot of happiness and confidence and gratitude into your life. I have photographed professionally done for my, me, myself, and my family every year. And then um, I have a beautiful print photo that hung on my wall. When life, like, life is full of ups and downs, and every day when I look at those beautiful photos of my children, my family, it gives me so much like confidence and I feel so grateful to have them in my life. Nothing can put me down and that's the powerful about a photograph that it is tangible. And also I like something that that you could hold it in your hand and that you could pass on to the generation and generation. Do you know what it makes Audrey me want to get really, really interesting is that before you had your portrait done, um you would look around your house. You've got lots of photographs, presumably of family, oh, um, up on the wall. Um, but there were really none of you. 
it, that's an interesting thing, isn't it? And I hadn't even realised. You see, I put photos everywhere. And when I have the grandchildren over to visit, I take them almost like a flick book. I'm taking hundreds. I think I've got 50,000 photos on my laptop. There's no duplicates. <laughs> but um, I change them and I put them on the wall. And because it's me that frames them and I put them up, I choose. And it was only when I was hanging this big picture, or more to the point, my husband was hanging the picture because I'm not technically minded with a hammer and a nail, um, that I realised there aren't any of me, but there are now. And will there be again? Will you be keener now to put photographs of yourself up? Yes, because my confidence has gone up about photography and how I look in a photo. Because these photos are amazing, but they are me. Albeit they're me on a very good day, it's me oozing confidence. Um, and there's lots of other days where I might not look quite as good. But it's recognising that you are you and you've made the journey of life and you are where you are now. And that's really, really something. And that's why I wanted to talk about it. I wanted to say to people, accept who you are, you know. You know, Audrey, I really wanted to thank you um, because you prove that I could do this to make women that value themselves and I feel that I'm just so grateful that you shared this experience with me and oh, I, sure. you you just prove that I can do it and this is the best feeling in the world I can't thank you enough I just can't thank you enough It was you changed amazing. my life too you know that you <laughs> prove that I can do it I can create the image that let the women value themselves and and change the value and change the way they see themselves again. Well, I'm glad this isn't TV because you'd see me. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're all a mess. <laughs> well, the, the amazing thing about this is, as we said at the very start, this was completely random that it ended up being Audrey winning this. And, and the reason that Sharma's on the programme last time was to talk about the very event that Audrey won this competition at. So it's sort of come full circle, really. And, you know, we were talking off air and you were mm -hmm. saying, Sean, it could, it could have been anyone that had won this. And it may have been someone in the very early years who was very young and feeling quite confident and, you know, sort of very beautiful and, and was quite happy to have this done. But how much more interesting that it is someone with a story. And when we say a story, Audrey has had a fascinating life so far and lots more of it to come. You know, she's saying she doesn't have many photos of herself on the wall. I find that really interesting considering the places you have been and the adventures you have had. I mean, just give a tiny little rough idea of all the places you've been to. Oh, well, um, I have been to the Antarctic because I'm quite into penguins. But my photo of me <laughs> with the penguins is just my feet. And this penguin that came over to see me, I was sitting on this snowy beach in, in the Antarctic and... And my feet are in the photo and I took the picture of the penguin, my penguin, <laughs> that came to visit me and walked up to me. But uh, yeah, I've, I've had a very privileged life. But, you know, you don't get to my age. You go through difficult times and lovely times. And as I say, that all shows in your picture. That shows in your face. Um, and it's that life experience that it celebrates, which is great. And you're also the youngest of 10 children. Uh, my mum had 10 children. I often say she was practising and then she had me and went, well, that one's perfect. We'll stop there. <laughs> <laughs> but to be honest, maybe she was just 44 and her child birthdays were over by the time she had me. I don't know. But she was quite an amazing lady. Yes, she was an amazing lady. And I suppose you don't know any different, do you? But I just wonder what it's like growing up in such a household. Um, well, my eldest brother was 20-something by the time I remember him and he was about to leave home. So there were different stages, I suppose, in my family. I, I was sort of at home with five or six or seven at a time. But I do remember my mum counting us on and off the train when we just used to go into town. And she would be counting us on the train and counting us off. And um, a bit like a Sunday school outing, you know, making sure that we were all there. Um, but yes, amazing. I've only had two children. I couldn't imagine having ten. Yeah. Um, I just had to ask if you were the indulged one, though, because there is that um, perception that the youngest gets away with everything. Oh, I think I got away with murder. <laughs> I was very spoilt, I suppose. And, um, yep, all the other children had to put up with me, I suppose. Yep, and babysit me. The only bad thing about being the youngest of ten, because my mum had five girls, if I'm number five and five boys, um, is she used to dress us the same in those days. So I used to wear my own dress and then two years later I'd grow into the next size and then two years later I'd, grow, I'd have the same frock for about 10 years. <laughs> and were there many photos of you all as a family? Ah, uh, Not many, to be honest, not many. And where it had several of us in, maybe other brothers and sisters have got them and not me. I've got very few photos of when I was little, to be fair. 